Greetings and salutations, young true believers. All right, so everyone is interested to talk about artificial intelligence. I've been reading the discussion board comments, and you guys have been having quite the debate. So, um, again, this all begins with the work of Alan Turing, the uh, Allied codebreaker during World War II. He broke the Nazis' Enigma code, and after the war, he famously published a uh, an article in which he asked um, what would it take what kind of criterion would we need to establish that a machine could think well if a machine could ever convince a human that they're dealing with another human being rather than a machine then that machine could be said to be intelligent and you might think well wait wouldn't it surely we would need more than that how do you know when you're dealing with another human being, that you are, in fact, dealing with another human being, right? I mean, most of us don't even question this, right? Why don't you question it? Because when you're dealing with another human being, they're talking, they're blinking, they're making facial, you know, uh, uh, ticks and, and gestures and, and uh, they're smiling and they're doing all the things that you do, Right. So you're judging them to be intelligent based on linguistic behavior and various other forms of behavior. It doesn't even occur to you to question that, right? You could be, for all that, dealing with what is known as a philosophical zombie, which again would be an entity like a human that displays all the behavior that human beings do, but has no inner life. It has no, um, as David Chalmers would put it, internal monologue. There's no TV, there's no movie playing inside its head right there's no conscious life right so the only criterion by which you can judge that your fellow human beings are in fact conscious is is the behaviors it's the behaviors that they exhibit right and so it would be with the machine if a machine could convince you that it's conscious that's all it needs right now silicon valley every single tech firm in silicon valley is going to tell you that artificial intelligence is here. It is not. What Silicon Valley specializes in is what's known as weak AI or machine learning, right? A machine follows an algorithm. Uh, I tried to do X, that didn't work, so now I'm gonna try Y, right? But it's not reflective, it's just based on an algorithm, right? Genuine artificial intelligence, some machine that could beat that could pass the Turing test is not here yet. It does not exist yet. Now, the $25,000 question for philosophers is, could it ever be the case that there would be a thinking machine? John Searle, formerly of uh, UC Berkeley, he is now uh, retired. He's Professor Emeritus. He published a paper in 1980 in which he argued, no, there's no way that a machine could ever genuinely be conscious that it could be genuinely intelligent well why not so Searle so comes up with what is known as the chinese room thought experiment and he asks you to imagine a person in a room and this person has boxes and boxes and boxes of mandarin chinese characters this person also has a translation manual on a computer screen a message in mandarin is typed up on a computer screen so he looks up all the symbols, he somehow finds the symbols in his boxes, right? Never mind that this would take forever and a day, right? Literally, he'd have to move at the speed of light to do this. But he finds all the symbols, he consults his translation manual, he finds out that the message meant, um, you know, said something like, what do you want for dinner tonight? And then he has to find out, by consulting his translation manual, how to respond, right? And so, by this cr this rather crude analogy, it's, it's an analogy on... Uh, on Searle's behalf, to what he believes a computer does, right? All the computer does, on Searle's view, is pay attention to what is known as the syntax, which is to say the grammatical structure of human language, right? What a computer does not do, and what a com no computer on Earth can do, and in Searle's opinion, ever will be able to do, is to understand semantics, which is to say the vocabulary or the meaning of the words. A computer recognizes symbols, it follows an algorithm to respond, but it does not comprehend, right? 
it can't comprehend. And so, on Searle's view, because no computer has anything that I don't, right? In fact, um, even though a human can't move uh, or calculate as fast as a computer can, still, a human brain is infinitely more complex than any computer. No computer will ever understand any human language. No computer will ever be conscious or genuinely intelligent, right? Now, there have been various criticisms of this, um, not the least of which, on behalf of many computer programmers, is that Searle does not understand that um, comprehension on a, on a computer's part does not occur in the program. It occurs in the CPU, the central processing unit, the, in other words, the entirety of the machine, right? Um, another criticism, and this one comes equally from Paul Churchland and Daniel Dennett goes like this, um, in a famous, uh, counter to, to Searle's argument, uh, Paul Churchland, uh, he comes up with this thought experiment called the rediscovery of light. We know today based on chemistry and physics that light is electromagnetic energy. So, uh, Churchland asked, you know, imagine somebody in a dark room, with a magnet and they start swinging it around their head as fast as they can. Can you read by it? No. Oh, okay. Since you can't read by it, therefore light is not electromagnetic energy. And then it responds, right? What this shows is that Searle has taken a ludicrously dumbed down or simplified, oversimplified version of the relevant phenomenon in question, ridiculed that, dismissed that and come to the erroneous conclusion therefore there can't be genuine artificial intelligence and that is obviously not a convincing proof will there ever be a machine that can pass the turing test well here we get to a really complicated question um if there's something more to human cognition human language behavior right Human cognition, especially as Descartes, you know, uh, framed the question, our ability to do mathematics, right? Uh, to do computational reasoning and to speak, right? Uh, he thought there was an immaterial part of us. He called it a mind, right? If you need a mind, right? An immaterial mind, not a mind. It's a part, a product of brain states, but some immaterial component to genuinely be conscious. Then no, a computer will never be conscious. No machine will ever be conscious. However, if the materialists are right, then it seems as if there could be genuine artificial intelligence if you just make a computer that was sufficiently complex enough, right? Now, Anil Seth, and I posted a TED Talk with Anil Seth um, to uh, the second module um, recently. He takes a slightly different opinion. He thinks it's not enough to be intelligent to be conscious, you also have to be uh, embodied. In other words, you have to be sentient. You have to be capable, that is, of experiencing pleasure and pain in order to be conscious, right? Um, and that means, of course, there could be several, you know, many manifold uh, variations of consciousness. There's, you know, the consciousness of an oak tree, the consciousness of an octopus, the consciousness of an earthworm, the consciousness of a spider, the consciousness of a horse, the consciousness of a rose bush the consciousness of a human being right but you got to be embodied and you have to be capable of experiencing pleasure and pain that on seth's view is more important than even being intelligent seth is of the opinion there will never be an intelligent machine because no machine can ever be uh sentient it can't experience pleasure and pain It'll never be embodied so again hot debate um let me know what you guys think in the discussion board